All right. Hi, I'm Jeremy Warner. I'm Vice President of SSD Marketing and Product Planning at Toshiba Memory America. And I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about uh, cloud native orchestration and storage disaggregation and introduce you to a product that we just launched yesterday called Kumo Scale. So uh, imagine a company, and this is a kind of a simplified example, a uh, web scale company with two big teams uh, who both need IT infrastructure. One, an online marketplace team, they're basically selling things, and a machine learning team that's uh, constantly scrubbing through all the data to try to figure out ways to make better shopping suggestions. Uh, the online marketplace team, they're gonna size out their uh, infrastructure to enable them to meet 100% of their sales demand on the busiest days of the year. It's Black Friday or Cyber Monday or maybe Singles Day if you're in China. The machine learning team, uh, they're gonna be 100% utilized 24 seven basically. Uh, Cause just the more they're running their algorithm, the better their suggestions get, the better their understanding of their customers. And they can apply those algorithms to improve their business. So most of the time, uh, like a Thursday in May, shopping demand is pretty low. So on average, these, this dedicated infrastructure is only say 50% utilized. Now, the machine learning team, they have all kinds of great things that they can do in terms of uh, improving the business and bringing forth uh, better suggestions to their customers, improving turn uh, sell through, but they want to go buy more servers. So when the CTO goes to the CFO to get approval for more servers for the machine learning team, what's the CFO say? Well, you know, I'm not giving you any more money because half the servers in our data center are sitting there unutilized. Of course, not actually half the servers, but uh, the average utilization across servers. So. This is a real issue in the way that people have implemented uh, on-prem cloud data center services. And the reason that cloud has been so successful is largely because of direct attached flash storage. And you know, really that's been a very low cost way, high performance way to implement flash. But if you look at some of the problems that exist today, with the way that it's been uh, delivered or uh, utilized is you actually end up with a lot of stranded flash and IOPS, particularly in uh, servers that have compute intensive workloads. And the converse to that is for servers that are running IO intensive workloads, you end up with a lot of stranded compute. So basically enterprises aren't making the most of their dollars. So I'm going to introduce you to a few different uh, example workloads that a typical organization like the, the web scale company that I introduced at the beginning might run. So some of their applications are stateless, and these can be moved easily around the data center with, uh, you know, from, from node to node. They tend to have high CPU utilization, but low disk utilization. Stateful applications like a NoSQL database and some NoSQL databases like if they're doing ad serving, they might have high compute, but maybe just moderate requirements for disk or for flash. And a NoSQL database for user profiles might have a lot of data associated with it and need a lot of flash, but actually be relatively low in terms of its compute. And then Batch jobs are jobs that are basically kind of always running all the time, uh, very high compute and moderate I.O. and storage requirements. Now, if you're running your own data center, uh, you don't want a million different servers to have to configure. So you know, what a typical uh, cloud administrator is going to do is pick some kind of standard node offering that meets most of their requirements and gives a good blend between compute capability, memory, and flash storage. But that means that 
Some applications are using all the compute and, and stranding a lot of the flash. Other applications are using a lot of the flash and stranding a lot of the compute. And it's also quite difficult to predict exactly how much you're going to need of all these different types of things. So if you look at the way that a typical data center uh, buys their equipment, they're going to look at how much do I need for an entire year, and they're going to outfit uh, their data center with enough resources to meet their demands for that year. If you look at, the, in the example that we showed, here's a moderate-sized data center uh, customer with 25,000 nodes to service all their applications. And what you see here is there's actually um, quite a bit of inefficiencies. So first of all, some of the applications aren't using all their disk, and there's a lot of stranded flash. Other applications have a, a lot of uh, disk or they're just not able to run enough applications on them for whatever resource and uh, limitation. And there you see a lot of stranded compute. So one way to begin to resolve the problem is to move the flash out of the server. And I'm not saying completely diskless. You might have some boot drives in the server. But move most of your storage to a storage node. And when you do this, because you're sharing the flash, uh, you actually are able to provision optimally for every application. And that's going to eliminate stranded flash and bring down a lot of the loss that you get in terms of packing, what we call bin packing, or packing your applications into the hardware you have. So you can see in this example, uh, based on our modeling, this customer was able to bring their actual number of nodes that they had to deploy for the same workload down by 20%. But there's another problem, which is lost operational agility and revenue. And there's an opportunity here uh, to not just spend less, but to make more. So that's where orchestration comes in. Now, orchestration, with orchestration all, and disaggregation, now all applications can be scaled out quickly, even stateful ones. When you have your storage uh, remote, you can move a stateful application from one node to another node and just move the pointer without having to migrate your data. So that, that allows you to be more flexible and agile in the way that you deploy applications in the data center. Now, the other thing that's possible is, well, you have these peak times. And during peak times, the high priority applications, like selling stuff, can steal from the low priority batch applications, like the machine learning algorithm that the machine team's working. And you know, if one day they do a little more work, and then on Black Friday they do a little less, that's OK. There's no time criticality, necessarily, versus the amount of work that needs to get done over time. And so uh, what you see here, a little animation, well, there's, this, there's the theft of the workload for those peak periods. And they're basically borrowing that compute power. And by doing that, here you see you know, about another 20% reduction in overall compute node needs. That's not to mention the fact that there's also flash savings uh, by not stranding flash on each node and being able to provision exactly how much storage each compute node needs. Now, when you want to scale out, then you can add compute or you can add flash independently. So that's going to give you the capability to really uh, invest just in the area that you need and scale out very quickly. So there was a paper that Google did, because they implemented something like this in a while ago uh, with Borg. And in 2015, they said, you know, with this kind of implementation, they could save 30 to 60% uh, of the number of compute nodes for the same workload they were already running. And the example that I gave at a conservative estimate of, say, $2,500 per compute node, that's $20 million in savings annually. And we also calculated, based on the amount of stranded flash that you would see, an additional $8 million in savings for that customer uh, on not having to buy flash that they weren't using. So 
What's the solution? Well, Kumo Scale that we're introducing is our shared accelerated storage solution. And it, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it on the next slide, but basically installs on the storage node to provide these services. And when you solve the problem, you, know, you can reduce your capex by buying fewer SSDs. And of course, we're selling SSDs, but the truth is we still can't make enough to satisfy all the demand. So uh, we want to we make them more valuable to our customers by helping them use them more efficiently. You can buy fewer servers. That's going to bring down your CapEx and, of course, your OpEx, because those things burn power, cooling, et cetera. And then now you can give your IT department the ability to give better uh, agility to the various business units in the organization, and that's going to drive up revenue. So why now? Why hasn't this happened before? I mean, it makes so much sense, right? Well, there's a few different technologies that have, are kind of coming together here at this time, moment in time, to really make this a reality. So first of all, the availability of high bandwidth, low latency networks like RDMA and our uh, Kumo scale software that we're demonstrating uses uh, Rocky 2 RDMA implementation. Mature orchestration frameworks, and so we've demonstrated in the past integration with uh, Lenovo X Clarity, with Intel RSD. Now we're showing uh, with our partners Portworks, Kumo Scale, uh, namespace deployment in Kubernetes. Uh, so you know we're really talking about cloud native orchestration environments here, um, and then. Well, one big change is bigger, faster, and more cost-effective NVMe SSDs. I mean, they're so big and so fast, it's, hard, it's getting hard for one server to consume all the bits and the IOPS that we can deliver. So sharing it across a lot of servers makes a lot more sense than when you had a puny little SATA drive. And then, of course, the NVMe OF protocol, uh, the NVMe standards body has released this, and now uh, you know, basically open standard and Linux host drivers, open source, are supporting uh, remote NVMe OF target devices. And then kind of the missing piece that puts all these technologies together is the Kumo scale software that we're providing to our customers. So what exactly is Kumo scale? It's software that you can install on a storage server. You can take an off-the-shelf storage server, install this software, plug in NVMe drives, and then plug it into your cloud-native infrastructure orchestration software. And we're providing uh, validation of hardware uh, with the software, of course, and through our RESTful API integration with the popular orchestration software. Uh, we also have a management engine and a virtualization abstraction layer so we can innovate and add features in NVMe OF faster than what uh, hardware SSD feature deployment can provide. And then, of course, uh, network connectivity uh, through the fabric module on the front end and then on the other side in the host uh, does not require any proprietary software from Toshiba. And then on the back end, the uh, NVMe driver module to manage SSDs, and in case you didn't notice, we also do have NVMe SSDs. We'll be happy to sell you with the software. So a little bit about Kumo Scale and why it's so amazing. Uh, first of all, it's very fast. So compared to direct attached storage, which is like about as fast as you can get, uh, if you take that as a benchmark, when you implement this, we're talking about less than a 20 microsecond adder to direct attached storage on an IO. And we've actually demonstrated over 8 million random read IOPS on a single box. Uh, flexible, so you could do thousands of namespaces in this thing. Uh, you're not tied into the capabilities of the SSD itself. And I think that's a key differentiator versus some of the other NVMe over fabric solutions that you'll see. This abstraction layer that we provide really provides great uh, capability and flexibility to add all sorts of features from security to uh, namespace reservation, management, et cetera. And then up to 384 terabytes we're supporting in, our, in the current boxes that we validated uh, today. So in a 2U, 384 terabytes, it's pretty good. 
uh, future-proof because it integrates into popular cloud frameworks uh, with broad ecosystem support. So you know, you're really not locked in to our solution. Uh, if you deploy this storage solution, you could deploy something else at a later date. Although, uh, you know, if you try it, I'm sure you would never want to do that. And then uh, it's really optimized. So 100% elastic, no waste, zero stranded capacity. And I think that's critical. So uh, thank you, everyone. I'm pretty much exhausted the whole time. But a little bit about Toshiba, and our booth is right there behind you. So uh, stop by booth A21, and you can see the Kumo Scale software in action. Thank you.